Welcome to the Westside Barbell Club. Uh, it's one week before the 97 APF Nationals. We're taking 18 people to the Senior Nationals. 18. More than any gym in this country. My gym's 20 by 40. We actually have 21 qualified. And um, so it's, it's about as strong as you can get, I believe, in the country. We've got 13 people here, squat over 800 pounds. We have nine, a bench over 550, four over six, and one over seven. So uh, we're getting ready to get down, and this is the workout you're going to see here is the last workout uh, squatting-wise before the senior nationals. That's why it's toned down. It's basically 50% of what we normally do. A lot of people ask me about box squatting. Do you just touch the box? No. You have to go, so have to sit down and relax the hip flexors. If you notice, we all sit back. The muscles are all tense, except to release the hip flexor. Then by doing that, you contract it very hard and arch the upper back and you come back up. Um, science tells us that going from a, um, a eccentric to a relaxed to a concentric um, phase is the greatest way to develop explosive strength. That's what you do when you box squat. When uh, I also want to remind you that when you box squat, you set the box below parallel. You don't have to ask your buddies how deep you are. Box squats are the most effective way to train. Our 165 pounder, Angelo Bernalli, has made 749. Heaviest training weights he uses 435. Vogel pull squat 865. His normal heavy training weight is 525. Just to give you an idea. It's basically we train from 50 to 60 percent with two and a half percent jumps per week. We wave it up to 60, we cut it back to 50, and wave it back up again. Uh, our volume stays practically the same throughout the year. And um, when we train at 50 to 60 percent in the squat, we are working the force velocity per relationship. It's very, very important. When the weights get too heavy, the barbell slows down. So you're really wasting your time. You're putting out force, no velocity. The weights are too light. You've got great velocity and a bar acceleration, but no force because the weights are not heavy enough. But by training at 50 to 60, we have realized um, by those two training inside that perimeter of weights, we are working the force velocity relationship at its greatest. Now you notice we use chains. When uh, sometimes we work up as much as 320 pounds of additional chain on the bar. What that does, it, as you notice, the chain is lowered onto the floor somewhat, so it's eccentric deloading and it's concentric reloading. And it, it builds a neurological response immediately that makes you more explosive. It teaches you to accelerate the bar, which is an aspect in America for some reason that most people never consider. The bar must accelerate. You're strongest at the top, so that's why the barbell is easiest to handle up here. You can handle 1,000 pounds at the top where you maybe only squat 700 pounds in the bottom. So why not put 300 pounds of chain when you're in the hole? You got seven. When you stand up, you got 1,000. Now that's a bit on the top extreme, but I hope you can understand what I'm talking about. That way you are accommodating resistance, something that normal machines don't do. For instance, pec decks are made completely backwards. You have to start in a very awkward position, which is dangerous. With these machines, you are starting out at your strongest position, going to your weakest, back to your strongest. That's the way weight training should be done. This exercise is very taxing. It works your, your legs, your hips, your glutes, and your lower back. And it's definitely very cardiovascular. Now you know this bill came with the dragging. A lot of people are interested in this. We got it from um, the Finnish 
lumberjacks. There's a lot of good deadlifters over in Finney. I, I, I suppose a lot of you older people remember the Finney's deadlift routine. But a lot of those guys are lumberjacks. And uh, only their theory why they can deadlift so well is because they pull logs in and out of the woods down to the trail where the tractors get them and use a different varieties of methods. One, they hook behind the belt like you saw Bill Killian do. Um, and they'll pull with uh, a regular handle. And also, uh, for us, we put um, the strap around our ankles like you watch Bill do. That works the hips in all four directions. He'll, he'll walk frontwards, backwards, and sideways, as you notice. That covers all, all the major muscle groups. Basically, I use the empirical rule of 60%. On the two heavy days for us, the high volume or heavy day, Friday and Monday. For instance, on Friday, I use 135 pounds. For 1,200 feet, I make six trips. Uh, Saturday, I use 90 pounds for four trips, which is 800 feet, or basically 60% of that work. Sunday, I use 45 pounds for four trips. I keep the distance the same, but the weight, again, comes down. Monday, it's back to 135. Tuesday, it's not for 1,200. Tuesday, it's 90 for 800. 200 feet at a time with a short rest period. Uh, Wednesday, it's 45 for 800. Thursday, it's 45 for 800. And a lot of times I drag just to warm up before I work out with 45, then in the evening it's back up to 135 pounds for 1,200 feet. You see a lot of articles and people talk about squatting as basically the assistant work that follows. Your back is your squat. When your lumbars give out, that's when you miss your squat. So be more uh, concerned about training your spinal rectors, your, your abdominals, your hips, your hamstrings, and your glutes. That's where your squat's going to come from. We do a lot of variety of good mornings. Uh, arch back good mornings, straight leg bent over good mornings, straight leg arch back good mornings, seated good mornings, which you watch uh, Dave do. Uh, he straddles the bench and goes down, um, straddling the bench. Now Chuck Vogelpool, uh, Dave's brother, is used as much as 525 downs to go down and touch his face. So that's an illustration of different type of good mornings. Like I said, we use five or six different variety of squats, five or six different variety of good mornings. Um, and um, three or four different type of deadlifts. That's how we test ourselves, and we're always using specialized exercises, glute, ham, reverse hyper, uh, back raise. Those exercises build up the strength of the muscle, and that's what really counts in how you raise your squat. When you're on a glute raise, you start to work with the heels, then your toes come in contact with the toe plate, and by doing that, it's, it's much like running. This exercise was built for um, Valerie Borzov, the sprinter, and Olympic lifters, where they come up on, on their toe, off their heels onto their toes. So this exercise will be performed the same way. Let me demonstrate. Put it on my toes. See that? I'm doing, I'm doing the glute ham right as far as the your leg curl because the hamstring where it inserts into the knee and the glute is activated at the same time just like any sports activity or squatting. Unlike a leg curl which only works the lower or the upper one at a time. This is far superior. It's a movement that should be started slowly, not jerked. It should be de decelerated slowly too, so not to damage any uh, connective tissue behind the knee. Now everybody's got different body structures, so naturally everybody's got a different mini max or, or sticking point. When you use a manta ray, it actually elevates the bar two inches higher off the shoulder. By doing that, it naturally it lengthens the spine that distance, so it changes George's sticking points. A uh, person leans over a lot like Chuck or I, uh, manta ray is real hard to use. Kenny Patterson and Joe McCoy, they squat upright, they're actually practically almost stronger with the manta ray. It actually aids their squat where it destroys ours, but we use it to build up the strength. You notice you saw a few of the guys doing heavy uh, uh, incline abdominal setups. 
And um, so that's one way to build up the stomach. We do a lot in a static phase where we'll hold the weight in one position for four or five seconds, much like standing up in a squat or deadlift. Uh, we also, you notice Kenny Powers is doing stand-up apps. Uh, I believe that every sports activity, you're standing up, you're not sitting down, your abs should be trained standing up. It stretches abs, puts them in a pre-stretch position, and that's the best way to work out. It takes all the pressure off the spinal cord. I warm up before I work out doing the stand-up abs, and I finish all my workout with stand-up abs. Just remember, 2.5% jumps per week. We, we go 50, 52 and a half, 55, 57, half, 60. As soon as the wave, we wave it back down to 50 and start the process all back over. We get stronger by doing special exercises like specialized good mornings, uh, manta ray squats, front squats, uh, safety bar squats, belt squats, dragging weights, uh, glute ham raises, reverse hypers, one-legged squats, one-legged deadlifts with dumbbells, a variety of exercises. We use approximately 50 exercises for each lift. This is known as a conjugate training method, where you select a specialized exercise to work the muscle groups that are lagging behind, and you set them in groups in many cycles every two or three weeks, and that's how we train throughout the year.